Family Sundays online with the Rubin Museum of Art. I'm Becky and we are a museum of Himalayan art and ideas in New York City. This spring, we're continuing our live online family programs. It's great to have you join us on this recorded workshop. For this workshop, we're going to be taking a look at a work of art from our exhibition, Masterworks. Then we'll create art together inspired by what we've looked at. Let's get started. So today we are celebrating the Hindu holiday Holi, which is the festival of colors. This festival marks also the beginning of spring and celebrates victories of good over evil. One of the classic holy stories that is told is actually about this ogress named Dundi who would terrorize villages until the children would band together and rush the ogress out of the village and banish her forever. But today we are actually going to explore a different story of good over evil by looking at the sculpture of Durga killing the buffalo demon. So the buffalo demon once thought he was invincible. Um, it was because he was told that no man could ever defeat him. So he would lead an army and he would battle with the gods and he would defeat the gods every single time. And so fearful of the buffalo demon's power, the, a great energy emerged from the gods and took the form as the warrior goddess Durga. And Durga is seen here in the sculpture with 18 arms, nine on each side, and is so that she can battle evil from any direction at any time. And so because the buffalo demon cannot be defeated by any man, the gods asked her to battle the buffalo demon, and she agreed. And so they gave her their, their weapons, and they provided her a lion to ride into battle with. And so she is actually powerful than all of the gods together. And we can actually see Durga's lion in the sculpture as well. If you look underneath Durga's right foot, you'll see a little animal figure, and that is actually Durga's lion. And so when the buffalo demon heard about this warrior goddess, he went to investigate. And when he saw Durga, he was actually so in awe with her, he asked her to marry her but she refused and this angered him so much that he went to battle with her. And during this battle, he went to attack Durga's lion, but she was quick and she stopped him by stepping on the buffalo's body. And then when she stepped on him, she pulled out the demon's human form from the buffalo's body and ultimately defeated him. And so in the sculpture, we can also see that happening as well. If you look on under Durga's left foot, you'll see the body of the buffalo. And then in her left hand, you'll see her pulling out the buffalo demon's human form by his hair. And this is the moment of defeat. And then if you also look in front of the sculpture, you'll see two figures onto the left and to the right. And these are two warriors in the Buffalo Demon's army. And when they saw the defeat of the Buffalo Demon happen, they got so frightened. They were so scared of Durga that they surrendered all of their weapons to her and they surrendered as an army and they fell to her. And so when the gods heard that the that the buffalo demon fell to Durga and she defeated all of them. They praised her, they celebrated, they were so happy. And Durga promised to protect the gods from evil forever. This copper sculpture was made in the country of Nepal sometime during the 12th to the 13th century. And it stands at about seven and a half inches tall. We're going to switch it over to the art making today, and we're going to bring in our teaching artist, Maria. Hi, everyone. Uh, happy Family Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy April. Happy Holy. Uh, my name is Maria. I am a teaching artist at the Rubin Museum. Um, I've been with them for a couple years now, and today we have a art making activity that is, um, it's really special. It, the the idea of holy as uh, Tracy had mentioned 
it's a celebration of colors, but also it's a celebration of love. And I think that, um, you know, even though they're not the same thing, there can be a lot of each one in the other. So there can be an expression of love through colors or a love for colors, right? Uh, so Holi, just to give you a little bit more background, is celebrated usually over two days um, in different parts of India in uh, Hindu culture. And uh, on the first day there, on the first night, there are bonfires, there are meals. But on the second day is when people go into um, the cities and with their neighbors, with their families, with their friends, they have a, a just explosion of color using different kinds of pigments. This has been a tradition for quite some time. Uh, it's said that it originated with uh, one of the Hindu gods, Krishna. Um, in his childhood, it's said that he threw uh, pigments to mess with some of the older people. Um, but also Holi is a celebration of the divine love between the two gods, Krishna and Radha, which sometimes are spoken of as one entity. And uh, there, there's a lot more information on that that maybe we can get into later, but I wanted to talk a little bit about Rangoli and uh, the significance of Rangoli. So what we're creating today is Rangoli inspired, but Rangoli is an art form using different kinds of geometric shapes and different kinds of colors to create beautiful patterns uh, either in the household or uh, as temporary art on the streets. And it can be seen um, both as a devotional creative practice, and it can also be used as a form of protection in the household. So I would encourage you all to kind of, once you have these finished art pieces that you make today, if you'd like to hang them up around the house, um, even if, if you see it as protection, or even if you see it just as a small little symbol of love in a corner of your home, um, I think that could be really beautiful and a great way to mark this new beginning and this spring that we're coming into. So today I'm working with paper plates. And basically you have the paper plate, you have Crayola markers. I have two different kinds of packs and then a kind of bottle to spray water with. If you want to use some cardboard from any, you know, package that you get in the mail, um, that could help to put under everything because it's going to be a lot of spraying water. But if you don't mind the cleanup afterwards, just, I mean, I personally don't, so I have napkins ready. So I'm just gonna work right on the floor. What we're gonna do is begin with our colors. And I think everybody, maybe everybody is pretty aware that every color has their symbolism in so many cultures across the entire world. Every color has its own meaning throughout countries, religions, um, methods of belief. So it's up to you. I mean, everybody has their own personal connections to color too. So my favorite color might be like this rosy pinkish red, uh, just because it reminds me of hearts, right? And, um, the kind of best way to begin approaching this is by using more abstract shapes. I think abstract is very free flowing. It's very open to interpretation. It's, um, it's anything you want it to be and anything the art itself wants to be. If, if, it's a, if it's a good practice, if it would help you, I would suggest just you know, begin by just putting the marker to your paper plate or your coffee filter and just kind of letting your hands guide what you wanna do. I didn't know what I was gonna do when I put the marker on the paper plate. Uh, and I also don't even know what color I'm grabbing when I grab it, but I think 
it's really special to kind of just let yourself be taken by the art and inspired by the colors that you're using. So I will say it's best to, I can only speak for paper plates. I think it's the same for coffee filters if you're using that, but it's best to make sure you have a hard surface underneath you and to use the side of the marker instead of the tip. Because with the tip, you'll get thinner lines, right? It's a little bit hard to see. But if you use the side of the marker, you'll get much thicker colors. And you'll see once we begin to spray them down, it's much better to see afterwards if the colors are a little bit darker. Just gonna add a little bit more. Um, I would say try as much as you can to fill up as much space as you can, because I'll show you some finished products right now. Let's see. So this was one of the first ones I tried. You can see the color isn't too strong, but I did try going with small dots and circles and just shapes. And I tried to use more of the tip of the marker. So you can see the colors, but it's not as saturated as some of these other ones. Here, I actually tried to do a design, which we'll see, depending on the design, might be a little bit hard to see once you spray it down and it's dried out like this one, but you can still kind of tell it's a flower, right? It's a flower with the branches and the leaves, but then, when we get to some that are a little bit more like this, where I use that side of the marker to make much thicker lines, you can begin to see that the colors are a lot more pronounced, even though the water, you know, soaked the water into the paper plate, soaked the colors rather, you can still pretty much see all of the colors. So that's why here I want to make sure the colors are really pronounced. And there's no right or wrong with colors. There's no match, matching of colors that don't fit, I think. Uh, just explore whatever marker calls to your hand and see how it feels and see how it looks. Ideally, you'll have a couple paper plates or a couple coffee filters to work with so that once you're done coloring in one and you spray it with water, then you can move on to another one and keep going. Uh, it'll be wet for a couple hours, but once it dries out, you'll have a nice dry paper plate or coffee filter to hang around your home or your room. I would not suggest eating off of the plates or using the coffee filters for coffee afterwards, um, but you're more than welcome to use it as decoration. So I'm just gonna add a few more lines just to see what it'll look like when I spray it with water. So now we have this kind of abstract exploration of colors. And I'm going to grab my water bottle, or sorry, water spray bottle, and just begin to spray. You can begin to see the water seeping into the plate and kind of moving the colors around. So things are starting to blend into each other. And the more soaked you get it, the more the colors will run into each other. So because I left this space pretty empty, there's not too many colors that are seeping in, unless I took my finger and did some of this. But otherwise, it's staying pretty true to form. But 
we're done with that one. If we take one that I did a little bit earlier, where it's completely covered with color, we've got orange, magenta, purple, more magenta, more orange, and we spray that down, the lines will not be as defined because everything is filled out. So now you can see some of the colors are starting to blend into each other. That orange has some more magenta in it now. The magenta is going down the sides and the outside where the orange is. And you can even move the water around on the plate or coffee filter to create new patterns. And if I keep it facing one way, everything will begin to drip, drip in one direction. So I'll leave that there to dry. Here I left a lot of white space and just one flower in the middle here. So let's see what that does to the paper plate once I spray it down. You can already see it's beginning to spread out there. Ooh, yeah. And now the plate is like really pink. That's kind of cool. And the flower is staying intact. And the more I spray it, most likely the less the flower will stay intact. And you see some of the colors are starting to come off. So it's not as deep as it was, but now the colors are going out into the rest of the plate. So I encourage you to try these different techniques and try to see which one you kind of like best, whether it's filling out the whole space with color or creating a design and kind of seeing what happens with that, an abstract design, or creating a very intentional drawing on your surface or just a small figure and kind of see what works best for you. Practice on a couple, try as many colors as you can. Again, Holy is the festival of colors and love. So whatever you do, make sure you do it with love, with kindness, with compassion, and you know, show compassion to yourself and enjoy the colors that you pick out and know that nothing you create here is gonna be necessarily permanent, but it's more about enjoying what you're doing in the moment. Um, thank you all for being here. And I look forward to hopefully in the very near future being in a in-person family Sunday again. Um, but until then, we have these, you know, once a month and it's always a different theme. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I truly, from the bottom of my heart, enjoyed it as well. It's not every day I get to just play with colors and that is, colors and love are like two of my favorite things in the world. So this is very special to me.